Good morning. Uh, Tim Nyland here, Head of Professional Services at Zacks, and today is July 1st, 2020, and this is our weekly internal strategy call. Um, what I wanted to do this morning is take everyone through the performance of the Earning Certain portfolio family and look at the performance over the pandemic period, which is started on February 2nd through to the end of June. So that would be June 30th, which is uh, pricing as of last night's close. So we're going to look at composite performance of the earnings certain portfolio relative to composite performance of S&P 500 um, ETF, which is the IVV. We'll shift over to the Admiral portfolio, and then we'll look at the dividend aristocrats performance on price relative to Noble uh, composite as well. Um, after that, we'll move on and, and I'll make some comments on some additions I've made to the 5G thematic portfolio. And uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of get my calculator out, calculate some of these relative returns as we're kind of going through this here. So um, right now you can see on your screen uh, earning certain portfolio here in blue, the IBV here in red negative 4.7 on the earnings certain. This is going to be, again, the equal weighted average stocks performance over this time period relative to the um, to the S&P 500 ETF. So it's about a 3.8% beat, and that's, again, through last night's close. So what I want to do now is compare that to the Admiral. And again, I'm looking at the Zacks Research System, um, and I'm going to just go through my list control. And, and again, these are all composites that I have created in the system. Um, the earnings certain portfolio itself and all the membership, uh, the, the, the group that, that we manage here can be accessed by just going into the universe list as composites. And normally, for, for most users, they're going to be at the very bottom of the screen. I've got a bunch of other, other composites in here that I've been looking at. My list is a little larger. Um, so what we're going to do is take a look at the Admiral now. And the Admiral performance being that it's just ultra, ultra defensive, again, just picking up a tremendous amount of alpha here in the downturn. You can see the, the difference between the, the blue and the red lines. Uh, we're looking at about a 9.6% beat, so almost double that of the larger 75 stock earnings certain portfolio. Keep in mind that in the earnings certain portfolio, the core 75 group, you know, we do have a lot of reopening stories in there. So as we start to move closer to any sort of therapeutic uh, for COVID or any sort of vaccines that are going to be, you know, coming out of trial and going into actual production, um, you know, I would expect the Admiral portfolio um, to begin kind of closing up on, on the earnings certain portfolio. I should say the other way around, earnings certain performance will for the 75 stock group will actually start catching up to the to the admiral. But again, keep in mind, this is a much more defensive portfolio, but the nice thing is, is that it still outperforms the S&P 500, even in times where, you know, times are good. Uh, it's just a great group of, of 30 names. <clears throat> um, what I want to do now is just move on to the tilts. And the tilt is, is kind of at 20% um, for the, for the 75 stock portfolio. So keep in mind, this is gonna be your top five S&P 500 names along with Adobe. And this is going to get you some really nice exposure to um, communication services in the S&P 500 sector, as well as you know, bringing that tech sector weight up that we need to. Um, again, you can, you can see that we get a little bit better performance here with a calculator here. So about five and a half percent. And so a little bit better performance with a 20% tilt. And again, this is the larger 75 stock earning certain portfolio relative to the S&P 500. Uh, performance actually gets even better when you shift down to the Admiral. We were already at a sizable beat and um, we just actually moved that up to about 11% um, now. So really, really good returns for the earning certain family of of equity model portfolios in this pandemic period. Uh, it's definitely not a surprise. Again, it's it's pretty much what this portfolio is made for. 
And the nice thing is, is that you don't have to worry about the timing of the markets. Um, and these are portfolios that will continue to outperform even once we start moving into, um, you know, a recovery period. Um, we're going to be climbing the wall of worry with COVID for quite some time, um, probably the next year, to be honest with you. We just, you know, looking at CEO surveys and, and how long this thing is going to go on, it, it looks like, you know, the end of 2021 um, will be when we start finally recovering um, financially um, a lot of these organizations, at least from, from COVID. And that's if we actually get a vaccine and a therapeutic out in a timely manner. They're still saying that the travel and leisure industry and entertainment industry isn't going to fully recover until about 2024. But, you know, who knows? That's that's just what I'm, I'm reading. I just want to share that with you guys. Um, so if we take a look at the dividend admiral portfolio or the dividend portfolio, I should say. Um, these would be the dividend aristocrat members. Solid performance. And again, about a, about a, close to a 3% yield. Um, this is a 4.8% beat. So again, the idea with this particular group is that if you look at, you know, the actual growth rates, uh, and, and there's definitely ways to tilt into even higher yield into this group. Um, there are some companies that pay a really, really nice dividend in this group. You can simply weight those even more um, to squeeze more yield out of this portfolio. But keep in mind, it just kind of goes along with a lot of the comments I've made. If you look at a 20-year chart, I mean, you can see how, how just rock solid this company's earnings are. And um, if you do a least squares fit to growth on this, you know, you're at 8%. And I know for financial advisors, you know, the very first thing that they think of when they think of yield is, you know, the utility stocks and the utility sector. And, you know, you are getting a little bit more yield, about a 3.6% on average. Again, we're looking at the equal weighted average utility name, you know, but at what cost? Um, you know, least squares trend rate for growth is like 3%. And um, if you take a look at what you're actually paying for that extra percent in yield, you're, you're, you're cutting your growth rate literally in half. And if you take a look at this from a PE perspective, I'll go ahead and just save that real quick. Um, I'll go ahead and put the Zach's earning certain up as the relative. I'll shift it back to a line chart. Um, so, you know, right now you're you're pretty much trading at long term median um, with the utility sector. So you get double the growth. And a slightly lower yield. It's just a lot, a lot safer play. Um, I haven't actually taken a look at the return on investment on this. It would be interesting to do that. I'll probably just do that really quick with you guys. Um, under fundamental history, you can come in here to uh, return on capital. Look at a return on invested capital would be interesting to take a look at. And you know, you can see again why you would want to be exposed to you know the dividend admiral versus a utility name um, the amount of return that they're making on their cost of capital is just so much more superior with the dividend admiral members versus utility stocks there's just i i could keep going and going and going on about how much better you know the the earning certain dividend aristocrat portfolio is versus the s p 500 and and we could do this with literally any name um, you know, if you throw the IVV in here, you could throw the S&P 500 in here. It doesn't really matter. Um, you know, you're still going to get the same result. If I were to strip out the, the dividend admiral and put the um, the aristocrat in here, or I'm sorry, the admiral portfolio in here, you can see the same thing. I mean, we're almost double return on invested capital, the, the share weighted average stock in the S&P 500 ETF. So, um so this is why these companies tend to trade at a premium. And again, we could just we could go on and on and on. One thing I do want to do quickly is I want to circle back to the performance chart. Um, I actually had the wrong, let me go back to my custom time frame. I actually had the wrong benchmark up here for the dividend aristocrat portfolio. So I want to actually put this to noble.
and you can see that it's just it's just a tremendous beat. Um, and this is not a shock, or it shouldn't be a shock to anyone. I mean, this is a 13.8% beat, and this is something that I called out like back in March, and this is something I've been calling out for years that this this noble ETF is just got tremendous exposure to names that are even going to be cutting their dividend, even you know the likes of Wells Fargo. Um, and even others in the financial space. I, I, I told everybody a couple weeks ago to, to start paying attention to the financials. We've got the stress test coming and, and a lot of other things that, you know, including the, the, the slope of the yield curve and other things that are just not boding well for the financial names. And sure enough, we're getting dividend cuts now So and, and actually postponements. And again, you know, not being exposed to those tilt sectors is really going to allow the the dividend aristocrats portfolio to perform much more superior than noble. So um, this this chart again speaks to those composite returns. In other words, just looking at those equal weighted average, the equal weighted average performance of the, each member in there is what is what you're looking at here. It just really bodes well for this group of names. So um, that's all I really wanted to talk about in terms of the earnings certain portfolio. Obviously, I'm very thrilled with the performance. Um, I expect this to continue, obviously. Um, with regard to the tilts, we have a newsletter coming out uh, next week on Tuesday. Um, I reviewed the, the tilt webinar. I reviewed my reviewed my tilt webinar deck. I mean, everything that I've mentioned about the tilts is, is, and, and the recommendations are still solid. That's the beautiful thing. We're not recommending any tilts that you'd have to day trade or anything like that. Um, you know, these tilts just continue to perform. I've actually got I've got this tilt portfolio up here. No, that's a different portfolio. Anyway, let's not worry about that now. Um, let's go ahead and shift our attention over to the 5G portfolio. Um, this is a thematic portfolio that I've been assembling, and um, we're gonna we're gonna roll it out shortly. I've added a couple names to it, and I just kind of wanted to go through some of these names. Uh, we've got some some you know some just some really fabulous stocks in here. We've got some that are missing too, and I did want to comment on why you know Intel isn't in here. It's not one of my recommended names, um, but at any rate, let's just kind of start at the top. Um, you know, Marvell is, is a name that's been in the news lately. Um, there's been a couple, um, NXPI, Zillinex, but, you know, Marvell is just a best of breed. They make all the high-speed interconnects and ARM processors, quad-threaded processors. I mean, you name it. Everything that, you know, 5G is going to need, they, they're all over it. Um, you know, Qualcomm is, is kind of the backbone of the 5G story with the speed and, and reliability of their modems. I mean, this is what, you know, obviously Apple uses has for years. Um, NXPI is really like the security chips. Um, those new, just to give everyone kind of a tangible on, on what these security chips, you know, look and feel like and what they do. Um, everybody's got the new credit card with the chips embedded in them that's pretty much nxpi's business and um it's it's rock solid so broadcom i mean we've got a lot of names in here like nokia broadcom it's, it's pretty much all things cellular all things 5g with these guys um these are kind of your broadest players along with qualcomm and then um, a lot of these other guys are, are are chip um designing firms and so companies like um Zillinex, these are field programmable semiconductors. Like they, like if you throw your car in reverse and you see the backup camera, um, I mean that's the technology behind. You know that's that's all Zillinex. Uh, they they pretty much own that space. And um, I've added a couple names. I just think are really really important not to forget. Um, these are two of my favorite REITs. And um, They've been popping up in the news lately. I've gone ahead and added them to the list only because, you know, with 5G and a lot of the mergers that are going on in the in the cell cell provider space. American and uh, American Tower and Crown Castle. I mean, if anybody needs read exposure, I mean, these are the guys. Um, these outside of 
maybe mowing the grass around the tower. Um, as far as maintenance is concerned, I mean, <laughs> it's cost, that's a good one. <laughs> Charlie, you're not, I know, it's hysterical. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of the perfect real estate investment trust. I mean, they've got a decent yield. Um, I mean, their growth is just, you know, absolutely spectacular. Uh, I could bring them up in the Zach's research system. You'd see why I love them. I mean, these these guys are just, you know, they 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 should really be the backbone of of any real estate exposure in a portfolio. If you need read exposure, you know, these are the two names. Um, so yeah, no joke. Um, once an antenna is up, these are the towers. These are the antennas. You know, if technology changes, you don't necessarily need a whole new tower. You just go up and hang a new antenna. Um, you can add, add antennas, you know, I mean, it's not rocket science here with these two. And this is something tangible you can see in any schoolyard, in any field. Um, you know, hey, there's another tower. These these are the two companies. Uh, and then, you know, I've been kind of beating the drum on Apple for years about this 5G thing and, and specifically really ranching up my rhetoric on Apple being kind of the the no-brainer play. Um, a year ago, June, so a year ago exactly, I mean, I backed up the truck on this name at like 153. It's at 365 now. Uh, so I've more than doubled on that name in, in you know, in basically a year. It, it's going to keep going. I mean, the 5G story is one thing with Apple. The wearables business is growing at like 30%. You've got, you know, the App Store and that entire, um, yeah, I don't even know what you want to call it, but it, it's literally a, 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 a cash generating machine all in of its own is becoming more and more of the story for Apple. So, Tim, don't they still have a ridiculous amount of cash? Oh, like Charlie, it's, it's level of it's, cash. I mean, the, their their cash pile is just it's just insane. So. I mean, it's it's the most profitable company in the world. It's probably one of the, the best run companies in the world. And um, it, it really needs to be, you know, regardless of, of it being, you know, part of a thematic 5G portfolio. I mean, I think in, in one of my webinars that I did, I said, you know, Apple has has got to be the easiest no-brainer 5G play. I mean, if you did nothing but, but back up the truck on Apple even right now, you'd be fine. You know, we're, we're, we haven't even entered the 5G super cycle for Apple yet. And this is something I've been pounding the table on for over a year. Um, you know, get in, get in, because the 5G super cycle is coming. I mean, you've got 350 million out of the, you know, billion or so. There's probably 950 to a billion phones now, by now. Um, 350 million of them are going to be replaced. You know, I mean, you're talking a massive super cycle. For Apple, um, you know, last weekend, unfortunately, my iPhone 7 ended up in the washing machine, <laughs> and uh, so I had to run out and buy an iPhone 11 last Friday. So didn't necessarily want to do it, but you know, had to do it. I had and to do that sure last enough, year with the X. Go ahead, Charlie. No, I had to do that last year. My uh, yeah. 6s died. I had to buy the the 10x. It was right before the 11 came out. I'm yep. like, all right, I don't have a choice, you know. So I'll yep. try it this, later this year. Yeah. So while I'm there, I'm looking at the new iPads, and I'm like, I need one of those. And so I'm definitely planning on picking up a new iPad, and I need a new iMac, too, because, you know, the new ones are just so much faster. The one I've got won't even load the new operating system. So, and it's that... It's that more than anything. That 5G super cycle is going to trigger the upgrading of 350 million iPhones, 350 million iPhones, and you're not just going to buy an iPhone. You're going to buy some AirPods, the new the new twos with noise canceling. You're going to buy a new iPad. You're going to buy a new iMac. Intel's now manufacturing their own chips for their iMacs. I mean, you know, the story just goes on and on. So, you know. There's a couple names in here that, um, I mean, everybody's got their own their own niche in here, like Acoustics, um, and I think there's one other one that's in the filtering and, and RF signals business. I think it's Corvo. It is Corvo. 
Um, so these two names, I mean, the RF filtering, especially Acoustics, this is a super small name. Um, this, this thing could absolutely go parabolic if that whole fear of 5G thing, you know, and the RF signals, you know, start freaking everybody out because Acoustics has got, you know, that 5G filtering kind of nailed. And then Skyworks is the antenna supplier. So, I mean, 350 million iPhones being built, Skyworks is going to be cranking out a lot of antennas, you know. Um, not to mention everybody else that's going to be building 5G phones. So, anyway, I think I've got a pretty good list here. Um, I'm looking for a client. I, I've got a, I've got one of our clients that uh, that owns his own RIA firm that's willing to do a roundtable with me. Um, he's 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 kind of a resident expert in in not only the 5G space but the chip space. And um, I'm hoping to do a webinar with him for all of our clients, which will be really good, hopefully here in the next month or so. So just some interesting tidbits on why Intel's not on here. Um, Intel is just no longer best of breed. And um, I don't recommend Intel for anyone's portfolio. I'd recommend everybody get exposure to AMD. Um, a much better run company, much, much faster chips. They're just making headway leaps and bounds um, over Intel. And interesting, Intel is kind of wrestling with their own demons. They manufacture their own chips, and their their manufacturing technology is becoming kind of dated. They've 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 kind of um, you know bled their existing manufacturing. You know, they, they've pretty much run it run its course for all it's worth. And um, AMD um, utilizes Taiwan Semi to manufacture their chips. As a matter of fact. Pretty much every chip name I have up here, Taiwan Semi manufactures their chips. So you can kind of see how incestuous this list is. So you got to own Taiwan Semi, you got to own AMD, you got to own Apple, you got to own American Tower, you got to own Crown Castle, right? So there we just covered the chips, the chip manufacturers. Um, you know, Marvell has all the high-speed internet, interconnects the ARM threaders and does all the quad-core processing, all the multi-threading. Um, you've got NXPI with security. You've got Corvo and um, Acoustis with the RF signals and the filters. You've got, I think I might have said Skyworks for antennas. Anyway, it, this is that whole supply chain thing. And it's not just Apple names I have up here. These are your best of breed supply chains, regardless of what your what the cell phone manufacturer is. So I think it's a pretty solid list. Um, and then Nokia, you know, Broadcom, Qualcomm, this is just basically everything cell phone. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end the strategy session for today, everyone. Thank you.